84 AD, the Scottish Highlands. 30,000 Caledonian tribesmen are battling for their freedom, fighting against the might of the Imperial Roman army. Taking control of one of the armies of the past is a family of four, divided into two generals. Right, Mum, bring the cavalry to engage these guys. And two lieutenants. The whole army appears to be advancing. Using state-of-the-art technology to challenge the greatest generals of the ancient world, the team will attempt to leave their mark on history. We're pretty well in total battle here. This is Time Commanders. With Eddie Mayer inside a 21st century military command centre and taking control of the battlefield are the Rose family from Edinburgh. Cameron Rose, 49, police inspector. Sue Rose, 47, retired classroom assistant. Joe Rose, 21, drama graduate. Ben Rose, 19, student. All from the same family, all on the same programme, whose idea was this? Oh, now leave me out that. Why, Cameron? by Joe. Why? I just thought it'd be a good idea, just for the family to get everybody together and do something like this. You're a big history fan? Yes. Which aspects do you like best, you're most interested in? Older, ancient, 6th century, AD. OK, you might have to go a little further back than that today, but Ooh. we'll see how we go on. I, I thought it might have been your idea, Jo. It was not my idea. I just filled in the forms. I do what I'm told. Because you want to be a C-list celebrity. Well, uh, that's only a means to an end. I really want to just be able to do panto for the rest of my life. And if being a C-list celebrity means I can do that, then bring it on. You're, you're already B-list on this programme, so... <laughs> <Fantastic>. Congratulations. <laughs> Excellent. You you're already much. a winner. Uh, Sue, mm. you probably know these two better quite, than anyone. Well. What, mm -hmm. what should we know about them? They're both quite strong personalities, and they, they've practised arguing quite a lot. Ben, you take a keen interest in history to the extent that you've, even from, from the days when you were a child, fought fought battles. Well, I'm quite interested in Scottish history, battles in particular, so I used to draw out wee maps and work out how the battles would have been done. Did the Scots always win in your battles? Yeah, of course. OK, well, we'll see in a moment which battle you're going to be fighting. Before we do, I'm intrigued that the two youngsters are going to be the generals. Who decided that? Don't tell me Dad again. It was a, it was a, a team decision, I think. We, we just figured we've had 40 years of collective experience of taking orders from these guys, so we thought it might be a bit of a laugh if we... Well, actually, I thought it would be developmental for them. Oh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Always thinking of them. Now, let me introduce you to our historians who are going to be watching your every move today. Say hello there, Eric and Sol up there. Keep an eye on what you do and come down later and give us their judgment on your performance. Dr. Eric Nussbacher, Senior Lecturer in War Studies, Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst. Dr. Saul David, Military Historian and Author. The battle the team must fight will be won or lost on the information they are about to receive. They must pay close attention because the clues are all there. You are going to be, and you'll be pleased to hear this, on the side of the Caledonii, or as I shall be referring to them, the Caledonians, against the Romans at Mons Graupius. Watch very carefully. Here's your briefing. The year is 84 AD. The Empire of Rome stretches from the Euphrates in the east to Britain in the west. The place is modern-day Scotland, then the Empire's forbidding northern frontier. 
on one side, the awesome forces of the Imperial Roman army. Opposing them, 30,000 Caledonian tribesmen fighting for their lives. The Roman army had descended on Britain in the reign of the Emperor Claudius. It had taken 40 years to pacify the Celts, but by 60 AD, Rome had gained full control of southern Britain. With a rich agricultural surplus, the province of Britannia would bring huge profits to the Roman Empire. In the process of colonization, the Roman legions had become renowned for their strength and ruthless efficiency. In 77 AD, Canaius Julius Agricola was appointed governor of Britain. Agricola was a seasoned warrior who had already fought two campaigns on the island. He knew Britain well and was aware of the fighting prowess of the British tribes. In a series of military campaigns, Agricola subdued the tribes of Wales and Northern Britain and conquered what is now Southern Scotland. Soon, Agricola set his sights on the Highlands, inhabited by fearsome Celtic tribes, known as the Caledonii. They occupied a rugged landscape difficult to attack. At first, Agricola tried to lure the Caledonii into battle but the wary tribesmen kept their distance. Within a year, Agricola launched a second attempt on the tribes of the north. This time, the Caledonii chose to fight. Thirty thousand men from the tribes of the Caledonii have congregated near Mons Graupius, a mountain in the northeast of modern Scotland. The exact location of the battle remains unconfirmed, but possible sites include Murifold, Derno, Ray Dykes and Care House. The tribal coalition is led by the Caledonian general Calgacus, or Calach. He and his fellow tribesmen are fighting for their freedom. The battleground is open but rough terrain, a rubble-strewn valley at the foot of a steep slope. Occupying the Roman front line are 13,000 men from Batavia and Tungria, men from modern-day Northern Europe. They are specialists in close-quarter combat, and as warriors, they are disciplined and relentless. The professional Roman soldiers may be feared throughout Europe, but they're still nervous of the Caledonian size and appearance. And the Celtic chariots, quick and fast in combat, command respect from the Roman troops. On the eve of the battle, the Roman army may be outnumbered, but for Agricola, victory will mark the climax of a seven-year campaign to secure the empire's northern frontier. For the Caledonian tribes, defeat means death or a life of slavery under Roman rule. The stakes are high, battle is imminent. All right. You're going to be on the side of the Caledonii. And you know this part of the world, don't you? You're a fan of Aberdeen Football Club, so that map must have looked mm. like familiar territory. Yeah, it means a lot to me. Exactly. <laughs> That's all going to be a big help. Um, would you like to know more about the location? Yes. 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 Glad you said that. Have a look at this map. <laughs> Could be a good boggy bit down the middle. Aye. Adam behind us will give you total command of the screen and you can have a 360 degree tour of the battlefield, which you can do any time. Why not have a look now okay. and compare it to the, the map you've got in front of you. The Highland battlefield is scattered with rocky outcrops, covered in heather and small clusters of trees. With the steep slope on both sides, whoever can take control of the high ground will have a commanding view of their enemy. This advantage could prove decisive. The natural inclination of the Caledonians and 
Cal Gaccus in particular, was not actually to fight the Roman legions in open battle. He'd actually manoeuvred quite well and generally had withdrawn using the terrain against them. The problem he's now got is that the Romans have advanced so far, they're actually about to get to his granary hordes, basically the place where his food is grown. And if they take that, the whole structure of the tribe is destroyed. He almost has to fight now. And quite a flat expanse in the middle. Yeah, he's like the Roman. Do you want to do some plotting of your own troops, then? What we got? Well, what you can do here is send your two lieutenants down mm. to our technicians at the front. A couple of things they need to do, obviously, report back to you on the detail of what your forces are, so you can start deploying them up here. And also, each of you will have control of, of one half of your forces. And it's really important, lieutenants, that you get an understanding now of which of your forces you're going to be looking after, otherwise it could get uglier in battle than you intended. So go down and familiarise yourself with your forces and uh, shout back to the generals everything you see. The team have researched their enemy well, but between them, can they agree on the right strategy to defeat Agricola's more experienced Roman army? Most of our forces are weaker than theirs, means we need to use the strengths that they have, whether that be the hill or the, the fast attack that the, the skirmishers have down the hill. It's a mistake to view these Britons as untrained. They may not have had their Roman training. They may not have been able to stand out there on a parade square and, and turn left oblique at the sound of the tuba. But I would not call them untrained. They didn't train a British warrior because fighting was a way of life for them. So maybe they're untrained, but that does not mean that they were not deadly fighters. With only a little time remaining to form a battle plan, the generals must be decisive. I think we should concentrate some of our foot soldiers here, bring them to us. If we can get our chariots round the side and our horsemen round the side, keep our archers protected. Yep. Thank you. Just, if we can get them down, down there, yep. <laughs> Yeah, but so, uh, they're not going to stand and let us do this. Maybe we can coincide this with an attack from here because these guys will be... Wait, 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 wait. So what happened to sitting and waiting? You're attacking from the sides and the front now. <laughs> no, no, no. We're attacking was... everywhere. The plan is we, we sit here and wait for them to attack, and when they do, we, we send... to attack and we attack around the sides. We attack from the front and we send our, our mobile troops around the sides and the back. We might sit there and they might not attack because last time they came to Scotland they didn't, did they? They just... Well, in that case, maybe what we need to do is pull some of these back so that we are looking vulnerable here. Ah, pull back as if we're frightened. I'm not Although, going to give you too to much longer. Honest, I'm going to need to see your plan very soon. I think that uh, the way we've got it, I think that's, that's okay. okay. You don't that's want to pull some of them back? Their first instinct is that actually be a bit more aggressive, but the natural caution of the Scots is actually making them determined to hold a few troops back, possibly even too many. They might split the army, and if they do, it could mean disaster. Th as long as we're on the hill, I think that's, that's the thing. Okay. Okay. Right, so you're all clear on where you want to be. You have to decide, decide now. You're the boss, I'm not the boss. At this well, I'm going to take my lot slightly further up the hill. You can do whatever you like with yours. <laughs> So, let's, so just to be clear, there is utter division before you've even started. <laughs> this all goes well, doesn't it? Absolutely. It, that's how it's going to be? You're confident you can fight this battle and win? Oh, yeah. OK. <laughs> Lieutenants to the front, generals stay here and oversee. And Deploy your troops. Defending their freedom against Roman attack, the Caledonian generals will deploy their archers on the high ground to the left. Meanwhile, covering the Caledonian right flank with two units of agile cavalry. The team are planning to envelop the Roman army on both sides, using their fierce Celtic warriors to hammer the advancing Romans in the center. Their huge strength in numbers, plus the high ground, give the Caledonians a natural advantage over the Romans. As long as Caledonian discipline remains intact, they stand a good chance of a famous victory. You need to be as clear as possible in your instructions so that everything is where you want it to be before the battle starts, because that could be any time. While you're taking your archers, Mum, can you just make sure that your cavalry are just behind the archers, directly behind them, so that they're ready just to sneak past them. In you fact, want the cavalry up the hill as well? Over the hill, to the other side of the archers. 
but will Joe's concern with her archers cloud her overall tactical judgment? If that's the battle plan, I'm worried because they don't seem to have worked out a logical concept for what they're actually trying to do. They've got too many of their troops spread out probably on too wide a distance and they've got their key troops all grouped in one particular place. And I'm, I'm not convinced this is going to work. There's something to this plan. And Joe and Ben have at their disposal a lot of mobility in a position to get right around the back of the Romans. Possibly, for instance, to engage the Roman legionaries at the back to force Agricola to commit his tactical reserve before he wants to. True to form, Agricola has retained a large tactical reserve. But the Caledonians could deploy their nimble chariot key troops against these legions, breaking their formation and destroying the Roman battle plan. So have the team thought this far ahead? Have you got any instructions for the chariots? Chariots? Yeah, I've moved them round. As long as they're round and ready to go, then they're right, fine. Right, OK, yes, yeah, so the chariots are in this area as well. The Rose family, commanding 60,000 allied Caledonian tribesmen, will have to apply all their strategic skill if they want to repel the ruthless and deadly Roman army. So is everyone, everyone where we need them to be? Yeah. All right, you've successfully deployed your troops. Now you just have to... Bring it on! If the Roman auxiliary line breaks through their line, what are they going to do about it? The Britons don't need a line. The Britons don't need that tiny formation. That doesn't do them any good. But they have to know what to do if it all starts to go pear-shaped. Right, we think the Romans are on the move. Which side? They're the yep. other side. In the, in the centre, they're advancing. Okay, so, so your infantry are coming forward. That's, that's the Roman infantry. All From the centre or all of them? Uh, certainly the centre, the cavalry centre. are Okay, we need to still. wait until they get to the bottom of the hill. How are their There's horsemen doing? Are they they're horsemen stationary. Doing? Can you go up slightly? They're please, stationary. Yeah. Oh, you can sorry, see it from the screen. screen. Then can we get higher view of this? Who do you want to send out to them when they come? When they come, we're going to send the front right. how many? Three, four, cavalry five, six, are on the move. OK, cavalry moving forward. On the right wing. No, their cavalry are on the move coming yep. forward as yep. well. Leaving their legions in reserve, the Romans push four units of cavalry out to meet the right flank of Caledonian horsemen. The first engagement of the Battle of Mons Graupius is about to begin. Well, the Romans are coming up with their cavalry on their flanks, auxiliaries in the front. No sign of the legions, presumably, who are still in reserve, are they? So the Romans have got their legions in reserve, but not deep reserve. Our the right -hand whole side. army appears to be advancing pretty okay, well. Okay, when forward. they get to the bottom of the hill, we're going to get the entire front row of our infantry. As soon as they start climbing the hill, when we give you the word, it's going to charge at them. Okay. Almost directly before that, in fact, it should be we need to send the ar archers out, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, so now? Yeah. Yeah, can your archers, can you start firing on the horsemen, the cavalry, and the front row of infantry? You're going to have to wait until they're fairly close. Okay. Kind of an interesting comment by Joe just then. They, they're going to wait till they get to the bottom of the hill. They're going to actually have to start climbing up the hill before they launch their attack. She's determined to make the best use of her infantry that she can. She knows they've got to be using a shock, shock wave. What I'm interested in is, are they going to coordinate it with these pincer movement that they've set up? That's right. Out on the right flank, the Caledonian horsemen await the advance of the Roman cavalry. Their cavalry are going through a rocky patch. Our chariots will not cope with them on that rocky patch. Instead of using their chariot key troops in an early skirmish on the flat, the team have deployed them on rocky ground against horsemen. Will this prove a costly mistake? Dad, yeah? send one cavalry to attack inside the flank and then send the other one right. to attack, okay. attack the other yeah. cavalry. They're attack coming to get ahead us. Of The Caledonian cavalry now have a fight on their hands. Outnumbered by Roman horses, they must rely on their chariots to do some of the work.
but it looks like the team's chariots may be finished before they've even begun. Okay, our cavalry, get some of those guys in there, because our cavalry are being minced. The right hand infantry, this is ours so over here. Can we go back guys. to the Is that all their cavalry from the right hand flank? Engage. Right, we're pretty well in total battle here. We're all committed yeah, we on the right hand flank. All committed on the right hand flank. How are we yeah. doing with it? Uh, it's, it could go either way at the moment. Okay. We're not doing too bad. The generals are keeping a big picture of the battlefield. They are using their lieutenants as their eyes and ears further ahead of the, of the actual battlefield. The detail of the battlefield is being picked up by the lieutenants and they are keeping the bigger picture, as you say. And that's it. So far, are so good because the command structure seems to be working reasonably well, despite the fact that you've got children at the back and parents at the front. And you would have thought that would cause a problem. Have you sent in a, a, a unit of infantry? No, not to this batch because we're on the right wing, the right, right flank. Send, send in a, a unit of infantry. They're quite a long way away. By committing half of their cavalry to an early ambush on the right flank, the Caledonian generals have drawn significant numbers of Roman cavalry away from the centre of the battlefield and away from the Caledonian infantry, poised to commence their main assault. OK, we've tied up their cavalry. We have drawn them out. Maybe you should go for a full frontal now. The ambush off on the right flank does seem to have stripped the Roman cavalry off of their left flank. But do they have the, uh, the oomph to do anything to the Romans? Right. OK. If the Romans are still advancing, then push all the infantry at the front, like the front line forward. That's both of hill. you, Mum. That's you and them. All the front line, only the front line, all the front line down towards them. The Caledonian generals planned a battle on three fronts. After committing their right flank early in the battle, they now order their infantry forward across a broad central line to engage the approaching Romans. But has the left flank been posted too far from the action? Where are, where are the left-hand flank of cavalry, Mum? They're, they're actually coming forward without being told to because uh, they were too no, far. No, ours are the ears. Oh, ours. Ours. Keep ours to the left-hand flank. Keep them out. Keep them out of the battle. Despite the general's orders, a unit of Caledonian cavalry has been sent to attack some Roman infantry head-on. It could be disastrous. Meanwhile, on the right flank, things have got worse. Their cavalry have regrouped and uh, they're beginning to rout our cavalry. We are, we are fleeing on Take the right flank. To that right hand side, please. You seem to be losing it just a little there, Joe. <laughs> Sorry, it's going to be Is fine. Is it getting to you? It's going to be fine. Um, I can't bear to see the little people dying. You just can't stop caring. Can you? <laughs> I know. It's really tough. They sprung their flank attack probably a little bit too early and without enough support, and it could have been costly. But in actual fact, what it's done is slightly dislocated the Roman manoeuvre, and it may be that the aggression the Caledonians are showing after that is actually going to pay off. The Caledonians lost their chariots and half their cavalry to Agricola's disciplined horsemen, who are now galloping towards the main battle on the hill. If you can get the archers as soon as possible, get the archers just to come in right. to the side so that they can start being right. actually used. But with 26,000 Caledonian warriors led by Calgacus at last able to engage, the team have a chance to use their superior numbers to drive the Romans back and out of the highlands. Dad, if you've got any more infantry units at the back, just push them straight forward into they're the going, centre. Going right As the team launched their simultaneous attack on the left flank, can Joe's archers finally play their part against the Romans? So this is our archers firing now. Excellent. While your archers are firing. We've defeated their first group, their first Okay, line. keep going. Oh no, keep keep We've your got another chop. line coming in. Right, Mum bring the cavalry to engage these guys. Bring in the cap bring right, in the, the cavalry. cavalry are 
charging, watch the Yeah, bring the round our cavalry. Archers, get the archers. If you can, okay, bring your archers. Your archers are running. This flank of archers here, bring them down. Get them down, as far down into the Roman side as you can. Get them along the side so that, and behind them so that they can start firing on, um, so here, firing on the Roman troops section. from the back. Sorry. No, it's all right. You're, you're so loud they can hear you back in 84 AD. Excellent. Now that the Caledonians are committed on all fronts, can they use their superior numbers to envelop the disciplined Roman army? But if there's one thing Agricola's soldiers can call on, it's flexibility in the heat of battle. Now, here you see the Romans refusing their left flank. They're going to set up to try to prevent the Caledonians from coming in and wrapping right around their left flank. They've got to react to this fast because the Romans are actually coming up in an awful lot of strength now. And those Britons there are going to be in a Roman sandwich. Here they, here they come. The victorious Roman cavalry have moved on from the carnage on the right, charging up the slope and threatening to surround the Celts in the center. With the future of the highlands at stake, can the generals defend their advantageous position against a coordinated Roman attack? The Who's peasants winning? and swordsmen are running away on the, the right flank. Are we, okay, watch. Well, Direct the battle, come on. Okay, get, get, your, get your cavalry into this next lot because they're coming up here. So these guys have gone. And Mum, if you have any more infantry left. How are the infantry doing? Because you see the infantry. The, the Caledonians are fully committed, using their weight of numbers to hold back the Roman army. Their strategy depends on enveloping the enemy. But can they maintain the same organized line as the Romans? Not only are Caledonian troops less disciplined than the enemy, but they may be spread too thin across such an open area. If communication breaks down between distant, ill-disciplined troops, the team could be in serious trouble. We're bringing down the infantry into the battle over on the way. How, how are your archers doing? Are, are their archers that we sent round the back? How are they doing? Is that them there? I, I think they've run away. They're not allowed to run away, this is a battle. <laughs> Sorry, that's the nature of the combatants. We are, we are we're in retreat. The Caledonian attack on the left-hand flank has run out of steam, and Joe's precious archers are now in retreat. Pursued by Roman cavalry, Caledonian ill-discipline begins to show. What happened to the two back rows? Did we send, we, we didn't send them in, did Fully we? Fully committed. But back in the center, the Caledonian assault has been so ferocious, it may force Agricola to commit his tactical reserve. With all of his troops engaged, Agricola may find Caledonian numbers overwhelming. Can the Caledonian generals seize the initiative? Are the Romans committed their reserves? That's right. They, the they did, didn't they? They committed their legions. The Britons have, have forced the Romans to commit. Broadly speaking, we're surrounded. We've attracted them all into our end. Our Broadly life. speaking, you're surrounded. You're surrounded. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that. It's a massacre on that flank. It is a massacre on that flank. Dad's side then. Okay. So, so you want right, to want one, how, many, how many troops have we got left? Joe tries to seize control of an increasingly fragmented battle. We're definitely in flight. Oh. Who? Everybody? Yes. This, this yes, battle in the middle, right. we were winning that. He's on the right flank. <laughs> He's on the right flank. We're winning, but everybody's retreating. They still haven't panicked yet. They're still in control. Come on, 
Some of their troops may have panicked. There's hardly a part of the field that's not carpeted with Caledonian dead. Okay, bring your cavalry round. If you can get them as far down and in, in, in round the side as opposed to going back, coming back and forward again. The generals attempt to consolidate their troops for another Caledonian push. But with the resurgent Romans in danger of dominating the field, will it be too little, too late? We're still slugging it out here. Man, we're going to overcome okay. the cohorts here. You're going to, are you, have you got your battle under control there? Uh, yes, in the Mom's, centre bit. See that unit, Mum? Push screen, them in to, see, to the Roman back line, yeah. Where That's the our, are going. Our... Push the Mom, archers in. Okay, get your archers out of there and bring in that cavalry. Oh, do I? They're going to be rendered. Okay, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's yeah. nasty. Oh, well oh, oh, oh. Whose fault is this? It's my fault, and I'm sorry. It, who's firing? Who's the little people? We need to stop. <laughs> we need to stop firing. That's okay, we'll, 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 we've got quite a... We need to stop firing now, because yeah. we're firing on our own troops. Right. Excellent, they're awake. They're running. It took some kind and of... And come back again! I'm seeing a lot of Roman banners on this battlefield, but damn few British. We're getting a bit of a slaughter in here, I think. Can we have a big picture? Can we zoom out? Do you think it'll look less gory from up above? Yeah, it will look as bad. I don't want to see them die. The Roman machine slides into action, wiping out whole areas of Caledonian resistance. It seems to me that they're being taken in little isolated pockets, and as they mop up, the Romans are reforming and getting ready to move on to another part of the battlefield. It's not looking good. Battlefield communication begins to break down, and the team face a serious problem. In defiance of their general's orders, Caledonian troops are fleeing in the face of Roman tactical superiority. I'm afraid most of your units are running away, General. All my units are committed. All my units are committed. Mum, have you got any not doing anything? I think they're running towards your voice. There's a few voice. archers. <laughs> but our Scottish team have one thing they can fall back on. OK, Lieutenant, can you give them a nice, stirring, Braveheart-style speech and tell them that um, they've got to come back and fight? Just get the bagpipes out, quick. Okay. They've mentioned Braveheart, which might mean that things are getting bad. That's right. <laughs> the last card for the Caledonians to play is to mention Braveheart. The Romans may be butchering their way across the field, but inspired by the determination of their remaining troops, the Caledonians refuse to give up. Mum, where are your troops taking a beating? Yeah. You're so quiet in comparison. In yeah. comparison. <laughs> Not difficult. Who's this? We've got a few cavalry. They're going up the hill now, our cavalry. Oh. Oh, they're, they're running away, that's fair. Got much chance. Kill them, go on. Um, this has no correlation now to what's going on there. So this, this is a bit of a this mess here. This is a here. bit of a mess here. <laughs> what have we got left? We've got a few infantry. Um, on the hill. Just a few, where are they? But unfortunately, Joe's archers are nowhere to be seen. Where are our archers? Our archers have probably all run away. I don't think we've got many left. We've got six left there. We've got a few archers down at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> we don't have any archers left. OK? It's Joe's last chance to make her mark on the battle. I just feel that those archers need to be shooting somebody. It doesn't really matter who, just shoot somebody. They're running away, they might not do Your what they and uh, Chariots, are they all completely gone? Uh, just about. I, all I've got left is a few swordsmen, some scouts, and my general. Okay, what are you going to do now? Right. We need to get these uh, archers if we can. Not we the archers going around the back again. That's the only thing <laughs> you've suggested. they haven't gone there yet. Yeah. Yeah. All right, maybe, archers, let's try that. The archers are running away up the hill at the okay. moment. Okay. Oh, I was such a good plan and it's all gone wrong. What we need um, to do is get all the infantry okay. and concentrate in one place yeah. if that's possible. But not that we've got much left. Okay. So do you think, do you, you think this is winnable? <laughs> yeah. We'll humour you, yes. <laughs> OK. There are very few live Britons left on this field. The only sizeable formed unit left on the field is this little knot of light forces here. <laughs> and look what's coming. Look, look what's coming in for a visit. We've got a small number of peasants on the side of the hill. OK, bring them in. That's going to be the last action of this battle for the British. Yeah, I think I think it's coming it's coming to a sticky end. It's a shame because they fought it well for, for long stretches, but the troops in the end, unfortunately, were too spread out. They were too it, it made it too easy for the Romans to take them one at a time, one formation at a time. Oh no! Right, 
Right, we went to, we went to I can't look. And yet I can't stop. Both of you, can you both bring them into the centre? No, they can't go anywhere, they're fighting. Your mum's busy fighting, don't, don't disturb her. <laughs> oh, heard that it's one like before. being at home. <laughs> okay. Whoever you can, bring in right here. Right, oh, into yes. where? Oh. To the centre. Oh. Oh. We've lost that. Oh. Oh. I'm afraid we're exhausted. <laughs> uh, we've, we've still got a few that we need to regroup at the centre. If they're at the side, oh. then bring them in as quickly. Bring them in, bring them in, fight. Work. Mum, fight do you have any left to the side? Oh, okay. Our I'll general's just died, he's been surrounded. Your general's just died, that means I'm not isn't it? Ours have all panicked and are running and oh. are no. the general's Defeat died. imminent. Look, they're still going, they're still going. Defeat Wait, defeat even imminent. scores. Where do they come from? You're not doing anything. Not oh. You are defeated. Oh, no. You are defeated. Uh, bad luck. Come back up there, lieutenants. Bad luck. Or was it bad strategy? All bad strategy. Oh, definitely. Bad implementation or bad execution. of our wonderful well, plans, I suspect. I think so. I'm keen to hear what you think went wrong there. OK. <laughs> Can I make one suggestion? First of all, archers are no good well out of... They, they need to be firing into a group... Uh, but if we're firing into a group yeah. that is in battle, then we're going to hit our own arch. Well, that's right. So that's why well. it needed to be done right at the start. At an early stage, they need to be within range to soften them up. OK. OK. I should have said that earlier. Thank you. It doesn't mean he's right, just because he said it, you know. <laughs> but you should well, have said he, it earlier, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we didn't possibly, have that. Possibly, it's because our archers didn't point. really do a lot of good. I mean, I think they were too it was far. all very well. They were we quite far out. Too far they up were too far away. If only you brought them down and ran the side and through the back. That's what I said. I suggested that. <laughs> Sue, how did it look to you down there? Oh, chaos. <laughs> um, I, I, we just didn't have a, a sufficiently coherent plan and our troops were not always being used when they should have been and where they should have been. So it's down to the generals then? So uh, oh, absolutely, the absolutely. Ben, what I, would you have done differently? Well, what should you have done differently? I think, well, maybe our plan was slightly off. I think maybe we weren't quick enough to move things when things happened. Mm -hmm. Maybe we, we waited a little too long for them to come in and they had an advantage in mm. on this flank and we just capitulated. Okay, let's see what our experts thought of what you did. They've been watching. Sol and Alec come down. They watched all your planning. They watched all the execution, execution being the operative word, <laughs> in this battle as you so horribly let Scotland down. But don't feel bad. What do you think? They did better than the Caledonians did the first time out. Uh, which, which says a great deal uh, about how the Caledonians did the first time out. You approach the battle with absolutely no idea of what you wanted to do. You didn't have an aim. And the best suggestion that I heard at the beginning, certainly from a strategic point of view, was from Sue, who said, run away. Get out of it. Conduct guerrilla warfare, make the Romans hate this part of the world for the next 15 years, get out of it. So, you did not have an idea of how you wanted to win the battle. You didn't know what you wanted to make the enemy do. You finally roughed out an idea of, of kind of what you were maybe going to do, and uh, didn't think about what you'd do if it didn't work. I saw it slightly differently. I thought, I thought it was a classic case of fortune not favoring the brave, actually, because as I saw it, your plan may not have been watertight, but it was bold. And you had two very interesting and nicely planned flank attacks. The only problem was you launched them too soon, and you launched them without support. And they had some effect, but there's no one there to take advantage of it. From that point on, you became reactive and not proactive, and that cost you, because if you're reactive against Roman legions, you're almost always going to lose. And things were happening on each part of the battlefield that you couldn't control. You couldn't shift forces from one place to another because everybody was engaged finding nasty little battles. Now that would have been okay if you'd had a great big bunch of guys held in reserve to go send in and, and, and swing the battle one way or the other. But you didn't. And one by one, the Romans were able to engage and destroy your surviving groups while they stood still, waiting for someone to tell them what to do. You lost the initiative. 
I will say on a positive note though, that the communication, given that you had the two parents down there and the children up here, was very good. You were clear, your orders were clear, your parents, your lieutenants stayed down below, they listened to your orders and they tried to carry them out. The only problem was, were the orders the right ones? Communication, e excellent. The plan, I think, was, was always going to fail and that's the problem. How did they do in reality? What happened in history? Yeah, that one's, that one's a sad story to tell, actually. All right. Who gets there first? The Caledonians. They get the best piece of this battlefield. They get that nice uphill sight. They can see everything that's going on. They can watch the Romans come. And that is a nice starting advantage to go along with their huge numbers up there. The Romans come in and Agricola, the Roman commander, keeps his Roman legions tight in the back where he can use them in case everything goes, uh, goes to rats on the battlefield. He's got them as the tactical reserve that he can use to swing the battle the way he wants. And he keeps some cavalry in reserve as well. And further to the front, he has got his auxiliaries. Now these are Germans, pretty much, and the Germans are going to do the serious fighting for Agricola. And he's got some, some cavalry on, on the flanks. It all starts out with everybody chucking spears at each other. And we see javelins, and we see uh, the pilum flying through the air, and some archery and that doesn't really change anything. It's the customary way to begin, to give everybody time to set themselves up for the battle. Then, two things happen at once. Those chariots start to get going, possibly with some cavalry support. And they start coming in towards the Romans, try to get them going, try to get a battle going, and the Romans have got their cavalry on the wings here, and they're able to get the chariots and some of, the, uh, some of the Celtic cavalry out of the way. And simultaneously, the Roman auxiliaries are going to come up and start engaging the British main infantry line. Now the battle's not lost at this point. The Caledonians are in a tricky position, it is true, and their, their light troops have been pushed back, but they still have the advantage of the terrain, and they still have a potential surprise up their sleeve, and that is a flank attack. They detach, infantry and move it round both sides, both sides of the attacking Roman columns. There is a possibility of envelopment here, particularly because they have such a vast majority in numbers. But because the Romans have got their cavalry well in hand, they're able to use the cavalry who are committed and commit the additional cavalry who have been held in tactical reserve to come around and protect themselves from being enveloped on the flanks. You guys tried to go around the flanks. You succeeded for a little while. That's nice. So did the Britons in history, but the Romans were prepared and the cavalry came roaring in on the flanks. Basically, the battle ends up, because the main part of the Caledonian force is pinned, it really comes down to close quarter fighting, and there's no one better than that, than the auxiliary troops, these Tungrians and Batavians, akin apparently to the Gurkhas of the modern day British army. These are the experts and gradually they drive their way through the center. It becomes a rout and unfortunately I have to tell you, casualty figures, 10,000 Caledonians to just 500 Romans. And these legionaries here don't even have to wash the blood off their hands because they don't get involved on that particular day. So you're absolutely right. What do you do? Run away. Finally, Eric, we're talking about Brits and Caledonians. When did Brits and Caledonians become one? The, uh, we're using the term British, we're using the term Caledonian to refer to the Celtic language-speaking inhabitants of the Isle of Britain and this region which was called Caledonia. That's not the, the tribal name of any of them. And they had all different names. We're not sure what was attached to which tribe. One thing we do know is that Caledonia was not inhabited by people called Scots at this point. So the only thing that the Rose...